It would be really nice if the back were all the way done or done on the wave, but it's not quite there yet. I recently watched Harvey Meyer demonstration. As a matter of fact, I watch Doug Schneider and Harvey Meyer often to see what I'm doing and compare it to learn to improve. And what I use here is I'm going to use this little homemade jig that I showed you before. And the difference between the way I do this and Harvey Meyer is he would come back and he would turn the front side now. But what I'm going to do is I want to be all finished with the back or at least finished out here on the wave. So I'm going to put my jig in place. The jig I'm using for this one, I've decided we're going to use 120 on this one. and my indexing jig. Make sure your pencil doesn't have to be super sharp, but this one here is nearly as dull as I am. So I'm gonna give it just a little sharpen up before I start making my lines. So I lock the nail on my jig into a hole on my jig and I'm going to make a line across. Move it to the next hole and another line. The next hole and on and on. 120 times. And that is 120 lines. Good to go. For real, the back is all done. If you were paying close attention earlier, you would have noticed that I had forgot to move, remove the inside here. But now the time is come to turn this around and do the front. I'm just going to turn it around. I'm gonna worry about lining up the lines in a little bit. But since I got a bunch of turning to do before I have to draw these lines on the front, I'm not too worried about it now. In this case, I'm going to leave my, my little jig in here. I don't particularly like to do that, but it won't fit out with a platter this big on this little lathe. Make sure the speed's as low as it gets. Well, on my lazy medium belt setting, anyways. And not a surprise, the front is not true. However, the back is nice and true from where I stand. As always, I want to use the tail stock as much as possible. So I'm going to bring that tail stock in. I can't turn the whole thing in one big pass anyways, because it'll be way too flimsy and angry with me if I try to turn it from here if I try to turn it from here do the beating and all that in one chunk it won't be happy tail stock is now in place it's tight and I have the support I want I've put the tool rest where I want nothing hits as I spin it around 
So time to true up some of this front. Alright, starting to look decent. So now I'm going to work this rim and I'm going to get this rim right and then I'm going to start working in. I'm only going to work this in portions and what I'm going to do is turn it down, checking thickness, paying attention and then I'm going to bead that section and then I'll work on another section and then finally the center section. Hopefully that'll be enough. Now I just need to start turning down some of the inside here. So once I've turned, I'm going to look at my thickness here. The main thing about this thickness is to make sure that when I'm making grooves on the other side, that they won't come through. I can feel that there's just a little bump right there that I need to bring down before I do a little bit of sanding and then put beads on this portion here. Now that feels pretty darn good. So now for a little sanding, again 150 and 220, and then we're gonna start beating right here. All right, so now I have sanded with 150 and 220. This is nice and smooth. It runs down nicely, and it's time to put some beads on. If I didn't mention it already, I'm doing this now leaving as much material as I can in here because the vibration is going to get wild and crazy the further in I get. Now that I've beat it up to where I've got turned down, I need to turn down this next section. 